Gradient just launched Accelerator Blocks, which makes it easy for any engineer to put together complex AI workflows without much effort. And these Accelerator Blocks are interesting because you can take one and put it together with another in different workflows. And so I'm gonna show you how to do it. If you've watched my channel, you already know about Gradient. They're a great AI company that have sponsored previous videos and they're sponsoring this video as well. Out of the gate, they're starting with five Accelerator Blocks. Here it shows them. Personalization, Sentiment Analysis, Q&A, Document summarization and entity extraction. These are the most common use cases for AI at the enterprise level. So if you're an engineer, you don't have to build this stuff yourself anymore. You can use Gradient and the best part right now, all of it is absolutely free. So if you don't already have an account, come up here to the top right, click sign up and sign up for a new account. Once you do that, you're gonna be dropped in your workspaces list. You're gonna come to the bottom and you're gonna click create new workspace and then give it a name. Now I've already done that V2 right here. So I'm gonna say go to workspace. Now remember, almost everything you can do from the interface you can also do through code and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So these are the accelerator blocks. We have all five of them listed at the top right here and I'm going to show you how to set it up. One of the most common use cases for AI right now is retrieval augmented generation or RAG. Basically giving a large language model additional context, additional knowledge so it can answer questions about things it didn't previously know about. And why is this so important? Well if you're a company and you want to be able to have a knowledge base that can be asked questions like ChatGPT would, RAG is the best way to do that. But let me show you right now. So go over to the left side, click RAG collections, and we're going to upload our first collection. Now I've already done this, my RAG collection, but we're going to create a new one. So go ahead, click create up in the top right, and I'm going to call this Harry Potter. So I've downloaded Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It's in PDF format. Let's see if it works. So the supported types are text, PDF, CSV, MD, and DOCX. So we can go ahead and choose files, and then we start the upload. And it's very fast. So we can already see the the status is uploaded and we should see processing. There it is processing right away. So what it's doing is it's chunking the document and creating a vector store from it. And again, all of this is done for us now. It is so simple. Now creating the RAG collections is the one thing that you need to do through the interface. Everything else can be done with code. So here we go, it's ready. Now we can actually test it out. So click over to model testing and we're gonna be using the amazing Mixtral 8X7B Instruct model. We're gonna tick this on, RAG completion, and we're gonna select the Harry Potter RAG collection. If we open up this advanced dropdown, we can set the temperature, the top K and the top P, but we're not gonna to touch that right now. So what happens in the first chapter of the Harry Potter book? Hit enter. Now it doesn't stream, so keep that in mind. It's gonna generate the entire response and then output it, and there we go, all ready. And there is a summary of the first chapter of the Harry Potter book. Now let's go back. I also created another RAG collection called My RAG Collection. And what this is, is Microsoft's 10Q document. So basically their financial statements. So if we go back to model testing, we come over here, we turn this back on again, and I'm gonna select My RAG Collection. And we're gonna ask how much revenue did Microsoft earn last quarter? All right, and based on the context information provided, so it did reference it, perfect, it earned 49 thousand million, so 49 billion in revenue for the quarter ending September 30th, 2023. And let's keep asking, what are their main sources of revenue? And I absolutely love that we're using the Mixtral model here. Based on the provided context, the main sources of revenue are productivity and business processes, intelligent cloud, personal computing, unearned revenue, and international operations. Perfect. Okay, so now you see that. It is super easy. You really don't have to think about much. You just upload the documents, you create a collection, and then you can access that collection through the model testing tab, but also through code. Let's click back up to accelerator blocks. Now let's go over to document summary. So document summary is you provide it with a bunch of text and then you just ask for a summary. This is an extremely common use case for AI and now it could not be more simple. And not only that, we can train it with examples. So if we click here, we can give a source document so we can give like a little sample of the document that we want want to summarize and an example summary. So if you want to guide it and get better summarizations, this is the way to do it. And we can also select the summary length, short, medium, and long. So once again, let's use Harry Potter. So I gave it the first chapter of the first book of Harry Potter. For the summary length, I'm gonna choose short. I'm not gonna give it any summarization examples. Let's just see it work. And then I'm gonna hit submit. And there is the answer. The first chapter of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone introduces the Dursley family who are prideful and dismissive of anything magical and mysterious, and it continues. So that's good. Now let's try a medium length summarization. And there it is, medium length. 
Perfect. Now let's say we want to do this with code. Let me show you how to do that. So I opened up Visual Studio Code. I have a new file called gradient.py. I'm going to open up a new terminal in Visual Studio Code, and then we're going to install gradient. So pip install gradient AI dash dash upgrade then hit enter and it should install no problems. Then we need our access token and our workspace ID. So we're gonna output these lines of code right here and then we need to fill this out. So coming back to gradient, we're gonna come down to account, select workspace. We're gonna look for this V2 and there is the workspace ID right there. So we just click this little copy button, switch back to Visual Studio Code, and we're gonna enter it right there with quotes. Now we need the access token. And then we click this more button, we click on billing, and then we click over to the access tokens tab, and we're gonna generate new token. Then go ahead and enter your password, grab your access token. I will be revoking this before publishing the video. We're gonna switch back to Visual Studio Code and paste it in right there with quotes, of course and save the file. Okay, once we have our gradient access token and gradient workspace ID, we need to do a few things. We need to make sure that those are accessible using environment variables. The first thing we're gonna do is actually import OS right at the top there. So the next thing we need to do is import the libraries that we need. So we're gonna say from gradient AI, import gradient and summarize params length. I'm pretty sure summarize params length is included in gradient, but I'm gonna import them both just in case. Then we need to set a variable with our gradient library. So it's as simple as that. Gradient equals capitalized gradient with parentheses. Now the next thing we need to do is create the document. And all the document is is a set of text that we want to summarize. So here I say document equals parentheses and then line after line of text that I want to summarize all the way down to the bottom and then you close the parentheses. Now if you remember back to the gradient UI, one thing we can do is actually give it examples of summarization so that it actually gets better at summarizing in the way we want it to. So let's do that. So we're gonna create an examples variable and it's gonna be an array of example pairs. Let me show you one. Open up the curly brackets. We're gonna call the first parameter document open parentheses, and then I already grabbed one, so we'll use that. And I'm gonna paste it in right there. This is another paragraph of text about Apple. And then we're gonna give it an example of summarization. So right after that, we're gonna add a comma, and then we're gonna give it a summary example. And then here is our summary example. So with all that in place, now we actually have to run the summarization. And all we need to do that is say gradient.summarize, and we pass in the document and the examples. And then we're just gonna simply print it. So we gave it the document, we gave it some examples, let's see what it gives us. Okay, so we got an access token issue. One thing I forgot to do is we actually have to wrap it and set it as an environment variable. So to do that, we do os environ and then put that in the environment variable and same thing with gradient workspace id so just like that we fixed it or hit save and then play all right and here we go this is the summary based on the example now let's do something a little different we're going to scroll down to the bottom and rather than printing the result from these examples we're not going to use any examples and we're going to base it on the summarization length that we want okay so here we're going to be using our summarize params length library we say dot medium we want a medium summarization length we set that as the length Length variable. Then we have another variable result from length gradient dot summarize same as before. And instead of providing the examples, we're simply going to provide the length as a length, then we're going to print it. Let's see what we get. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's how easy it is to do summarization with an API with gradient. Now we can also do sentiment analysis, we could do personalization, and we can do entity extraction. Now I think entity extraction is extremely interesting. So let's give that one a try. And as I mentioned, these are called accelerator blocks, which means you can build one on top of the other. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the summarization and then we're going to do entity extraction. So we have that result right there. Then below that, we're going to do some other things. But first, we want to import this part of the library. So we're going to say extract params schema value type, and we're going to add it to this import statement right there. So we're going to be extracting two entities. We're going to be extracting the company and the product. And if everything worked out properly, it should be Apple and Apple Vision Pro. Then we do this gradient.extract. We pass in the document, but rather than document, we're actually going to be using this result from length. So we input it right there. And then the schema we pass in like so. And then we're going to print the result at the end. So I'm going to save it and let's see. So now we're taking one summarization block and then plugging that into the entity extraction block. Okay, so we have an error and it says string type expected. So that's a validation error. And I suspect it's because this result from length is not a string. So what we're going to do is we're just going to double check what type this variable is, and then we're going to convert it into a string. So we're going to print 
result from length right there. And let's take a look. Okay, so this is a hash, obviously. So what we need to do is actually grab the value of summary so that it is text only. So let's add that key right there. We'll save, and then we're gonna play one more time. All right, perfect, look at that. So we have the summarization right there, and then we have the entity extraction right there. Company Apple Product Vision Pro Headset, perfect. You can play around with the accelerator blocks. They have other ones like the Q&A that I showed you, the sentiment analysis, the personalization as well. Play around with it. Let me know what you think. As usual, Gradient also has fine tuning of models that you can also play around with. Check out Gradient at gradient.ai. I'll drop a link to everything in the description below. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.